What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Datadash and today is October 30th of 2020. Well folks, I hope you are having a fantastic day wherever you are and in today's video I want to spend some time to talk about the bloodbath that we've seen in altcoins and talk rationally about whether or not we're at a bottom and what we have to look for in order to spot a bottom in the market. So let's go ahead, we'll dive straight into it. We've got a lot of other things to talk about as well. But to start off here, I wanna focus in on Bitcoin. Since the close of August and really the start of September and October, we've continued to climb up for Bitcoin from the upper $9,000 range to around $13,000, a little bit above $13,000. So again, well over a 30% rally here from bottom to top. And we've been seeing a lot of confidence resurge back into Bitcoin as we've had the highest weekly close in over two and a half years for price. But I want to go ahead and dive into the scene for altcoins because it hasn't been faring as well. Now, during this time while Bitcoin has been charging forward, altcoins have been losing a relatively substantial level of dominance. Doesn't mean that they're all going down in US dollar value. Doesn't mean that they're in some cases, keeping up with Bitcoin, but the broader altcoin market from the large caps, such as Ethereum to small caps that we talk about on the channel, uh, in this case, they're not generally keeping up with Bitcoin for the most part. So I wanna go ahead today, first off, and start off just with a broad analysis. What ranges can we look for support here? Well, I know that a lot of people are fighting out, a lot of people are closing positions, and probably asking an even more severe question of like, Nick, do I get out now? Do I lock in profits? Especially for those of you who have maybe been keeping up since we've been kind of talking about altcoins all the way back here in September of 2019. I would say, guys, as much as this can be a bit fearful uh, to see price moving at this kind of pace, Again, bear in mind, we were back here in July of 2020. This isn't the end of the world here. Altcoin valuations were relatively overextended. And I always like to find myself, uh, in this case, if I find myself one step behind, I always guarantee to make sure I'm not going to find myself two steps behind. That's a very important lesson here, guys. And that is that, you know, a lot of people, for example, throughout this time, you know, maybe weren't in an agreement or didn't see it that all coins had a value proposition that they were going to outpace Bitcoin, that the signs were clear of the higher lows and higher highs for all coin dominance. And then they usually bought in way later on when everything was moving at a rapid pace, generally around this higher range. Now, you find yourself one step behind there. A lot of people want to go ahead and sell their positions, take a loss, or maybe you know, take a neutral position or a slight bit of profits, you know, mitigating all those gains and basically get out of their position here. I've seen too many traders fall victim to this, not just when analyzing things like dominance, but just generally market price or broader other markets. They, they want to cycle in and out of positions and find the next thing that's going to move up 10 or 20% in one day. That's usually not a smart move. What we should rather do is focus here on what the chart is telling us, and also talk about the signs we want to see before we might want to build substantial positions or more substantial positions back into altcoins, okay? So just to let you all know, I'm not massively exiting altcoins or anything. I'm still more allocated to altcoins than anything. So I've been feeling a bit of the pain here, to be fair. So let's go ahead and talk about it rationally. So the first thing here that's important to note as we've been pulling at back from 42% dominance to 36% is that really the next actual support level we want to look at is right about where we are. 36% is a very valuable level. It was resistance back here in May of 2017, support here in October of 2017, along with that as well. It was a contested range here in July of 2019. And we also had very clear resistance here, here, and here as well as support back between 2020. So many points here in 2020, to be fair. And I think along with that as well, an important thing to note is that if we wanna take a look at the percentage decline here, this is about a 15 to 16% decline, roughly speaking. So again, this overall has been a nice substantial decrease in the amount of dominance that altcoins are owning in the market. And I think again, what we wanna to wait to see here is whether or not it's gonna hold this level. If it doesn't, again, outside of that, I mean, I can't really think of too many other major levels outside of down here around 34.5% as that was support back here or resistance down here at around 34%. Those would be the next few levels to watch. I really don't see altcoins dropping to that level, even in an environment when Bitcoin is soaring towards 20K. I think the, we've, we've already seen the brutal force of most of the sell-off that wouldn't justify dominance levels going that low. But let's just go ahead and A, run through some altcoins that we're watching in the market, and B, talk about the kind of things that we're looking for. So 
We're going to jump into those altcoins, but I want to mention two general things that I look for. I look for, you know, 75, 80% retracements, right? Those big double digit declines further beyond 50%. As many of these plays, you know, went up two, three, five, 10 X in their valuations, if not more. In that case, you're going to be expecting around an 80% correction in most of these. So we're going to be looking for that first. And second off as well, on many of these plays, in order to get a confirmation of reversal, much like what we would do here for market dominance for all coins, is we want to set higher lows and higher highs. As I emphasize a lot on the channel, you probably don't see many technical indicators on the chart outside of me drawing or doing technical analysis. I'm not using technical indicators. I wait for price to show me that. I wait for the buyers to showcase that they're willing to buy at a higher price than usual. And along with that as well, they're willing to sell, only willing to sell in this case, or uh, you know, stop maintaining the momentum against sellers at a higher price. So again, what this looks like, generally speaking, just to clarify it before we dive into those altcoin picks, is going up like this, right? Where we have in this case our low, we have a higher low, and we have our set of higher highs, right? That's what we're generally looking for here. Right, where we basically are seeing price start to zigzag upwards and starting to show more signs of confidence. Okay, so I've rambled on enough about those principles. Let's go ahead and dive into some of these altcoins. First off, before we dive into kind of like the four to five picks that I'm watching in the market, I want to talk about Ethereum. Ethereum right now is at a very critical level, a little bit below 3 million Satoshis and around 2,800,000. This was not only resistance back here in regards to price, um, as well as support back here in September 2018, but also where we broke through and continued the rally as we made support here at around 2,800,000 Satoshis. So I'm really interested to see what's going to happen over the next 24 hours on Ethereum compared to Bitcoin. I think that you're going to get some bottom feeders coming in and buying up price here, but again, We'll see what happens. Uh, I think uh, overall, you know, there's a reason I stacked Ethereum at the discount that we got around this range here in October. And I'm definitely going to be probably considering another average in on price here. Because Ethereum, in my, in my opinion, so far from what I can see here, has overall uh, been uh, not so much opinion wise. Again, let's try to simplify the chart here, turning off our drawings. We've seen that we've set continuous higher lows. We set one here in September, here in January, here in April and May. And then we've continued to set higher lows throughout then, right? So again, I think that there's a very good chance here we can hold on this support here or what was previous resistance and make it new support. But we'll have to see. Again, if it breaks through, I'm all ears for the idea that we could be you know, going for some substantial lower levels, especially as a lot of the yield farming craze, which did kind of you know grow this bubble in Ethereum that I'm not a big fan of, uh, could actually be fading out. And I don't think there's much space for NFTs and a lot of the stuff that people are kind of hyping up to a very high degree. I think it has to do with DeFi, and DeFi is going to be the substantial driver of this. If DeFi isn't taking off or we're not seeing increased usage, Ether is going to continue to decline. Now, let's go ahead and talk about Uniswap. Uniswap is a project that I'm really interested in, or Uni token. Now, yes, I do own a little bit of Uni, much like I own some ETH. I got it uh, freely airdropped in this case due to using uh, Uniswap myself. But I digress on it. I want to talk about the chart here. Uh, the chart has obviously been bleeding through. It looks a lot like compound uh, token or comp tokens chart in this case that's been declining. And the major thing here that I want to talk about what I'm looking for here is I fundamentally like Uniswap as a protocol and its market cap has been relatively flat over the last month. But the decline against Bitcoin has been very obvious. And I want to go ahead and talk for those of you out there who are thinking like, you know, Nick, when do I buy Uni token in this case? versus uh, maybe the Bitcoin that I'm holding. Maybe how do I swap this? Well, of course you can do that on exchanges, but you know, you're know you gonna have to determine for yourself what time is right. But for me, I wanna be completely transparent about how I look at charts. For me, I see here that we've consecutively set lower highs, or excuse me, uh, lower highs in this case, right? We set one here, one here, one here, one here, and here. It's not the just day-to-day -day stuff, it's the significant ones where we have an attempted rebound in price, right? And along with this, right, we've can continued to go downward here in price. And now we're down towards a much lower level around 17,000 Satoshis versus the height here around 80,000. So this is a pretty substantial decline for reaching the peak back here in September 18th, right? Just a little over a month here, right? A little, about a month and two weeks. So now that we understand and realize that this is still going through this, what are we going to look for to go long on uni if we were to consider it? We'd want to see a retest 
uh, basically a higher low here in this case from what we said. So basically having price, go ahead and draw this here. Just go ahead and just do an example chart. Again, this is not an analysis here of where I think price is exactly going to go. We'd want to see this kind of higher level here, right? Initial higher level. But the major thing you look for is the higher low, right? You want to see this not fall back over and close below this. You want to see it set up a higher level here, set in a higher high, and then a higher low again, right? These are some of the signs. The more of these that you get as you go along the zigzag line, the more confidence you have here that bulls have come in to lead the market and they're paying a higher premium for price, signaling an overall increase in price for a longer term trend. Next up here, we want to take a look at band protocol. I'm all about oracles. And again, with oracles, I know as with any new trending sector in the crypto space, there's going to be a lot of speculation. Whether you're a fan of band protocol fundamentally versus chain link, I don't care. I'm not here to really make that argument here. I like Chainlink. Uh, I like, you know, a lot of other places in the market. We'll talk about a few others here today. So this is what I like here. Seeing from top to bottom here, we are nearly uh, nearing an 80% correction against Bitcoin for BAM protocol after being one of the major market leaders here in this cycle throughout 2020. This is very, very common to see. It's not something to be per se ashamed about or fearful about. This is definitely not the time, especially if you bought Band Protocol up here, to be panicking uh, because that's a great example again, of the two steps behind philosophy. And in this case, we can see here that we've got previous resistance and support here. This was the midway stop point for the cycle. If we take a look at the logarithmic chart, right? Pretty much right in the middle between some of the major moves here between April to August, and excuse me, April to July. And then here from July to uh, August in a very short period of time, making that secondary portion of the cycle, right? No wonder we have such a stark correction because so much of this was done in a short period of time. So again, just another one to watch here. And again, another way about how I look at markets. Again, another example here, taking a look at Tele here from top to bottom here, we've had a total of an 84.3 to 84.4% uh, correction very close to what I think is going to be in total an 85% correction at worst. So again, this is already in the value range where I'm interested personally. And again, this is against Bitcoin as an asset. So the overall US dollar chart has been setting in those higher lows and higher highs. However, against Bitcoin, it hasn't been able to do that. Until we start seeing that, in that case, I'm not building a position, right? Again, I want to see this hold at this level. Or if we go down below, I'm going to wait until we start seeing those higher lows and higher highs. And that same goes for band protocol here. As much as that's great here that it's down towards 80%, my philosophy is, is that, okay, I'm starting to watch these plays when they get down to 80%. I'm interested. I'm going to take a position, though. I'm not going to try to pick the bottom or falling knives. I'm going to try and wait and see if we can get some of those higher lows and higher highs. And if I can get something in this range here when it's starting to show signals of a reversal, I'm all for that. Now, taking a look at Amisa Go, this is another play that I already hold a position in here as I was interested that this retesting the support range here. Sometimes I'll go ahead as I'm kind of an altcoin investor in the sense that I hold for multiple months. Sometimes I will prematurely build a position after discounts. And in this case, for my next position here, I'd be looking to see if it will hold on this support level here, in this case where it was resistance here, where it was support here in price before we left up higher, and then also support back here. And this is again against Bitcoin in price. So I'm gonna be waiting for it to bounce up here set in a higher low against from where it was here. So it could be anywhere between this range here, right? Higher lows and higher highs. So again, waiting for that zigzag in price for more confidence to showcase, right? So we start to forward, go forward up in price. I want to see again, those higher lows more than anything. Higher lows are the most important. But again, we would also like to see higher highs as well, sending resounding confidence at the trend reversals coming in. But again, if you guys need any further explanation, you guys want me to dive more into this topic later down the line, happy to revisit this topic in the future and explain more. So outside of that as well, we've got Ampleforth. So in this case, what I've done is just taking a look strictly at Ampleforth's market cap as you kind of have to as an asset. Price is not uh, really the deterministic factor of how you'll perform with Ampleforth due to, uh, due to the technology of rebasing, a positive and negative rebasis where your supply will increase and decrease depending on where uh, the price of Ampleforth as a token deviates from its target of around a dollar and one cent. But I digress here. All in all, I like here that Ampleforth has actually overall been able to keep up with Bitcoin as an asset. If you can, if you divide it by Bitcoin's market cap, it's actually been able to hold up quite well for the last month. And overall, you can just see here that since back in October, 
We've been setting in higher lows and higher highs, which I like to see here. As much as today's sell-off has been a bit discouraging, above all, if we can hold here, I'm going to be interested in Ample Forth. Now, again, I already own a position in Ample Forth. Uh, with all these plays, I do own a position except for Teller. I don't really own any substantial position in Teller, and I also don't own a substantial position in Band Protocol. So these are two that I'm looking at that would be fresh positions. And outside of that as well, I'm happy to average in or build new positions in Ample Forth and Amise Go and Ethereum as well as Uni in this case. So those are all things that I'm watching. Now I want to go ahead here and do some news here in the cryptocurrency space. One thing to keep in mind with Bitcoin is transaction fees are at their highest level in over 28 months, more than or nearly two and a half years in this case that we've seen transaction fees this high going back towards January of 2018. So again, what does this tell us here as we see the mean transaction fees going towards these relatively high levels, or at least the highest levels we've seen since all the way back in January? Well, I think this case, in this case, we're seeing kind of a dichotomy of two things here. First off, we're seeing here obviously more demand uh, for you know kind of throughput on the Bitcoin network. More people are wanting to send transactions than per usual as the market's been heating up. But along with this as well, we've also been having a decline in median hash rate. Now, when we have a decline in hash rate that's very substantial in a short period of time, this can actually cause congestion on the Bitcoin network. A lot of people don't know about this because people think, oh, you know, mining's just constantly going as is, but that's not true. Bitcoin has a difficulty adjustment every two weeks. And basically, until that two-week period comes to a close, if we had, for example, every miner, like a large portion of miners, going off the network, right? Maybe the hash rate cuts in half in a week or two, right? Or a week and a half in this case. It could literally stunt the Bitcoin network in a lot of ways because of that difficulty adjustment being every two weeks, right? So again, this might be changed in the future. I don't know. But all in all, I'm not even here to debate that. I'm just saying here, this is why, in a lot of ways, why we're seeing high Bitcoin fees. But this can really cause a halt to the Bitcoin network, accelerate fees, and actually be a negative hindrance on price. Um, again, in the long term, I know that some people say, oh, you know, Bitcoin fees were at their highest level when Bitcoin was at all-time highs, but that's not what really led price to all-time highs. It's a symptom of markets getting exuberant and paying an extra premium to speculate, move Bitcoin, do things of the sort. And in this case, I think more than anything, if we continue to see fees this high, and we, you know, of course, in this case, uh, we don't have a good difficulty adjustment soon. In this case, we could have a very bad pullback in price, similar to what we talked about the other day, where we could have the third time being a charm here, where price comes down. I'll go ahead and just kind of emphasize what I mean. If we take a look here at the daily, right, we've been talking about these kind of median cycles within the overall Bitcoin cycle. I think we could maybe come down to 12K in this case. And that would give some breathing room for altcoins in, in that matter. Not just because Bitcoin's declining, but also for some liquidity to circulate as it had back here in August and May. So anyways, again, one thing to keep in mind, though, even with the Bitcoin fee spike, Ethereum is still more profitable even after a 200% spike in fees. We're seeing a lot of mining traffic go towards Ethereum, a lot of people preferring to buy GPUs and mining Ethereum versus Bitcoin here. And again, I think this speaks to the fact here of what's going on in DeFi, but also with uh, the sheer fact that Ethereum gas fees are also high as well. So we're seeing a lot of general traffic in the crypto space, which is really exciting to see. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is a sponsored news post here, guys. I want to go ahead and let you all know about Cypherium. We just recently did our sponsor review yesterday of the project. It's one of the most interesting players, in my opinion. It's the reason we covered it in regards to uh, bringing about central bank digital currencies, but also providing a hub where we can not only uh, deploy and realize the value of central bank digital currencies alongside DeFi, enterprise blockchain, traditional decentralized applications, etc. Having a central home in this case, and really, I think one of the major competitors over the next year or two, um, if they can get Get some of that central bank digital currency market to Ethereum and many other players. But the major thing here that I want to emphasize is that, is that they're preparing for the mainnet launch. This is set to happen tomorrow, which is really exciting. It's been something that's been in the making for over three years for the project. So this isn't a project that just came about overnight. What has really solidified its value proposition for central bank digital currencies as they've been working with OMFIF and many other major organizations and companies through partnerships to establish a grounding to build about a framework for central bank digital currencies. Now, one other thing as well that I really like about Cypherium, again, and this push towards DeFi, is actually building about its own automated market maker or decentralized exchange known as CypherSwap. 
Now, the thing I really like about Cypher Swap as well that I wanted to share about today is that it's more than a simple DEX that we're used to. Uh, for example, I'm a big fan of Uniswap, but the problem with Uniswap, you know, in the broader sense of crypto is it isn't able to tap into the wide range of liquidity available. So we can't tackle into Bitcoin. We can't tackle into Litecoin. You can't trade these assets on other chains. There's no interoperability as you're limited to wrapped tokens or basically ERC-20 tokens on the Ethereum blockchain, which is all great. But I like how Cypherium in this case is creating CypherSwap. And they're not only building a blockchain application in this case where you'll be able to trade just like you do on automated market makers like Uniswap where people provide liquidity, they provide tokens. It kind of challenges the traditional limit order model in this case where people are able to just do market orders swapping in their tokens of choice. But you can also trade into a wide range of assets and... I love this above all, it's 100% community owned. They're basically giving out the token in this case to people who are participating with Cypherium. So I think this is really cool. Again, I'd recommend looking into it more, doing your own due diligence above all, but I think the project itself seems really interesting and I'm gonna be continuing to watch it here over the next few weeks and months. So. Above all, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed the video today. Again, keep an eye on those key levels here. We can already see we're getting a little bit of a bounce here in altcoin dominance. Wait for it to be over the next few days and weeks. Wait to see those higher lows and higher highs. That's what we're going to be watching here at the channel. And if you enjoyed today's video, consider dropping a like. If you haven't already, consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon so you don't miss another video. And outside of that as well, guys, Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. I think there's a lot of interesting things going on in the market. And one last announcement that I did forget to almost share, I almost forgot it here, is that we are giving away $100 of Ethereum. Today is the last day to participate in that competition. We'll be picking a winner tomorrow in tomorrow's video. So I'm really, really excited to see who's going to win that Ethereum. We're giving away $100 of Ethereum. All you have to do is just go to my Twitter page, at Nicholas underscore Merton like and retweet this key post, and then follow us over at digifox.finance. We've got a lot of people coming over to Digifox as a recent. Give the app a try. You can increase your chances by uh, sending a private message to uh, digifox underscore finance with your Digifox username. So anyways, everyone, that's it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.